Hi, my name is Diana Durkin, and today we're going to talk about Sally Hemings. Um, Sally Hemings was born in Virginia in 1773, and then in 1774, um, she was passed down by the Wales family um, to the Jefferson family. So Martha Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson's wife, um, her dad passed away, and therefore the slaves were carried from one family into the next. So as all of the Hemings family, including her mom, her dad, and her siblings, were transferred to the Jefferson family, um, Sally started in slavery as soon as she was born. Um, Sally uh, is notable because she ended up going to Paris in 1787. Um, she accompanied Jefferson's 14-year-old daughter um, while he was serving as the American uh, minister in France. So she accompanied him there and um, ended up staying in Paris for a couple of years with the Jefferson family, um, unlike most of their slaves, which stayed in Monticello, um, which was the Jefferson home in Virginia. So as Sally was kind of one-on-one -on -one with the Jeffersons, um, she ended up establishing some sort of a bond with Thomas Jefferson, whereas um, after his wife died, um, Sally and Thomas Jefferson engaged in a sexual relationship, which quickly turned into um, Sally having multiple of Thomas Jefferson's children. Um, after returning to America in 1789, by 1795, Sally had Thomas Jefferson's um, first child. So they had a daughter named Harriet, who was born in October 5th, 1795. Um, with their second child being born April 1st, 1798, and continuing on for what historians now believe is at least six children fathered by Thomas Jefferson. Um, although all of these children were not recorded in history textbooks nor discussed within the Jefferson family, um, it was kept a secret up until the 20th century whenever Hemings family brought attention to the fact that they were related to the Jefferson bloodline. And through scientific DNA, um, they did find what is almost 99% accurate of them being descendants of Thomas Jefferson. Um, with slavery going on during this time and being such a prominent issue in America, Things like this were not talked about. The relationship between slaves and their owners um, were much of property, much of them being owned and not being seen as people, um, not having any sort of manners or any sort of regard to their life. So it was not uncommon for the owners to um, engage in what's now referred to as sexual assault with their slaves. Um, slaves were kind of in this mentality of, you know, whatever my owner needs, I have to provide, which a lot of times was also um, sexual and not just physical labor. So as this started to come out in the 20th century, um, many found it shocking, although it shouldn't be considering the time that this occurred in um, and the events that kind of surrounded America at the time and how really not uncommon the situation was. Um, as Sally ended up having about six children with Thomas Jefferson, um, nobody brought attention to it, and he continued to use those children as his slaves. Um, he promised, he made a deal with Sally that when her children turned 21, he would grant them freedom. But in a weird way, he still used what he recognized as his own children as slaves for 21 years and typically didn't even let them become freed until you know, some of them were even close to 25. So Jefferson would write in his journal, um, in one of my primary sources, it's shown, he writes Sally and then kind of groups her with each name of the child, which I think proves that Jefferson was aware that these were his children. I don't believe he had any doubt in that. So Sally's oldest children are freed in 1822. Um, so her oldest children, Beverly and Harriet, they left Monticello in 1822, and they got to kind of live as white people. Um, many slaves weren't ever granted freedom, especially in this time when, you know, America hadn't really gotten to um, a war on slavery and if it was constitutional or not. Um, as her other children are freed shortly after in 1826, um, 
they were freed by the order of Jefferson's will because he also died that same year. Um, as they were freed, uh, Sally Hemings was not. And she ended up having to go um, move in and be a hereditary slave for other parts of Jefferson's family and wasn't eventually freed until eight years later in 1834. So as Sally Hemings was freed in 1834 with all of her other children already being freed, she then moved in with them in Charleston, Virginia, or Charlottesville, Virginia, um, and died the following year later at the age of 61 in 1835. So Sally basically spent her entire life being a slave for the Jefferson family, whether it was when she originated with Martha Jefferson's dad um, and when she eventually died as an inherited slave still in the Jefferson family. Um, Sally has no information really found online about her, um, even showing, you know, how she looks. Everything that historians have found is, is just a sketch um, even details about her birth are very, very vague. They know the year she was born, but, um, at this time, there was no regard to black lives. Everything was just completely dismissed and completely disregarded because they weren't seen as important. And I don't think they thought that they would ever matter even in the future generations of history. They just didn't see a change happening, which I think is why this also wasn't um, discussed about as much during that time is because nobody really thought that it mattered because of the blatant disregard they had for African Americans and for slavery and because they saw absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, some historians, um, it's controversial whether Sally and Jefferson had a romantic relationship or, or whether it was just completely, you know, slave owner and doing what the other asked for. Um, Given the context of the timeline when this happened, um, with where slavery was at, with where America was at, um, I personally believe that it was not a romantic relationship, but that's something that we will never know. Um, as the scientific proof has come out that there is Jefferson bloodline um, within the Hemings family modern day, um, the Hemings family has visited Monticello where um, Sally was kept a slave her entire life, as well as, you know, a majority of her children's lives. I think it's important to history, modern day, to know what these slaves endured and what was kind of seen as okay in society back in the 19th century and versus where we are now. I think that it's important to know the details of slavery and what, and what all hardships, you know, these African Americans had to go through. Um, and also understand the actions and the hypocrisy of most Caucasian people during this time. Um, I think that their actions and manners in history books today um, kind of seem similar to what ours are, but they're most definitely not. And I think that that needs to be shared and explained in order to ever have any chance of preventing um, something similar happening in the future because history does repeat itself. And I think it's something that modern day America really needs to learn and understand.